Hi, this is Len Furman, the sports time traveler, reporting on sporting events from the past as though they're happening now. Today's episode is titled, 61-year-old Sam Sneed is still slamming with the best. Subtitle, Sam Sneed has one more great stretch on the PGA Tour and also gives me a golf lesson. Where in time is the sports time traveler? If you've been reading my recent posts, you know that I've been hanging out in Miami Beach in 1964, where the Clay Liston heavyweight title fight takes place tomorrow, and where the Beatles performed live on the Ed Sullivan Show last week. You can see my articles on those events on my homepage on Substack. But today, I've popped up 10 miles north and 10 years into the future to February 24th, 1974, to cover an emerging story at the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic PGA Tour event in Fort Lauderdale. I specifically wanted to see how Johnny Miller was doing. Johnny Miller opened the PGA Tour season in January 1974 with the hottest start in history. He captured the first three tournaments in a row, a feat that has never been done before on the PGA Tour. And he became the first player to win three straight tournaments since Arnold Palmer in 1962. In winning the three straight, every single round Miller played was under par. The unprecedented start of the season garnered the 1973 U.S. Open winner a feature article in the January 28th swimsuit issue of Sports Illustrated. You can see the cover of that swimsuit issue in a link I have in the Substack written version of the article. I remember Johnny Miller crushing the fields at Pebble Beach, Phoenix, and Tucson in January 1974 in real life. As a 10-year-old boy in New Jersey, where it was freezing and everything looked white outside, I watched those tournaments on our 12-inch Sony Trinitron while I was putting golf balls on the carpet in our home. All the while, I was dreaming about being able to play golf in April when the ground would start thawing out. And that's a very long time to wait when you're 10. Now, here in Fort Lauderdale, on my virtual trip, I was expecting to see Miller crush the field again. But what I saw in Fort Lauderdale simply stunned me. Johnny Miller barely made the cut yesterday with a three-over par, two-day score of 147. Just as astonishing was the fact that Jack Nicholas, who is at the peak of his career and has won five majors in the first four years of this decade already, was also right on the cut line with Miller at 147. In addition, Tom Weisskopf, one of the top players on tour and winner of the British Open in 1973, missed the cut. The leader of the tournament was 32-year-old journeyman Kermit Zarley, a former dishwasher and short-order cook in his father's restaurant. He carded a two-day total of 139. But the really big story here was the man in second place in the tournament. It's soon to be 62 years old, Sam Sneed. And this is where today's story begins. 61-year-old Sam Sneed is still slamming with the best. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, February 24th, 1974. Sam Sneed managed a 68 on Friday for a two-round total of 140 to put himself just one shot back, tied with Lee Trevino, and in the final threesome going into the weekend here at the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic. Sneed's 68 was highlighted by a spectacular 31 on the front nine. He had four birdies and an eagle, on that magical opening nine holes in which he only needed 12 putts. Then on the 10th hole, his drive went out of bounds and he recorded a double bogey six. Sneed told Tom Sears of the Palm Beach Post, I love this. I had a dream that I was going to shoot 31-41, and that's the second time that's happened. I got the 31, but then when I took the double bogey on 10, I said, here it goes. Kermit Zarley the man who leads Sneed by one shot after two rounds told the Miami Herald, we all just shake our heads at Sam. You can talk about his swing and his physical condition, but to me, the most amazing thing is that Sam continues to have the desire to win. So many great players lose that in their 30s, but Sam is like a kid. 
The Fort Lauderdale News had fun with Sam Snead's standing in the tournament. An article by sports editor Bernie Lincecum started with this. If Sam Snead should win the $52,000 first prize at Inverary, he would make more money in one tournament than in any one of his 37 years on the pro golf tour. Bob Green, a sports writer for the AP, asked Snead what motivates him to keep playing on tour at nearly 62 years old. Green wrote, Snead made a quick, concise, one-word reply, money. He waited for a moment and then expanded the thought. With all the money they've got out here now, I just wish for a year or so I had my game, my swing, and some 20-year-old nerves. Now with some 20-year-old nerves and all this money they're playing for, we'd just show them something to make them sit up and take notice. The golf world does take notice. The golf world is taking notice of Sam Snead right now, for he is on a roll. Perhaps Johnny Miller's three straight wins should have an asterisk, because Sam Snead didn't play in those January West Coast tournaments that Miller dominated. Snead was here in Florida playing in senior and club events. Last week was Snead's first foray back onto the PGA Tour this season, and he made an impact. After firing a two-over par 73 in the first round of the Los Angeles Open, Snead had stellar second and third rounds of 68 and 66. His 36 holes in the middle of the tournament in 134 was two shots better than anyone else in the entire field. And it was a packed field. Take a look at how the leading golfers in the world fared on those middle 36 holes last week in Los Angeles. Sam Snead, 134. Tom Weisskopf, 136. Johnny Miller, 137. Jack Nicholas, 144. Lee Trevino, 146. Arnold Palmer, 147. Snead was tied for the lead after three rounds in the Los Angeles Open with John Mahaffey and Dave Stockton. A giant picture of Snead using his croquet-style putting method was on the front page of the sports section of the Los Angeles Times, along with an article titled, Snead Goes Five Under Par, Five Over His Age, as the Times was referring to the 66 Snead shot at the Par 71 Riviera Country Club. In the final round, Snead birdied the 17th hole to pull within one stroke of the leader, Dave Stockton. Standing on the 18th tee next to Stockton, Sam Snead deployed a little gamesmanship, according to Bill Shirley of the Los Angeles Times. Snead said to Stockton, You know, I birdied the last two holes to beat Ben Hogan in 1950. Snead was referring to a tournament more than a generation ago that is remembered in the climax of the only Hollywood movie to showcase the life of a professional golfer. Follow the Sun, starring A-list actors Glenn Ford and Ann Baxter, told the story of Snead's longtime rival, Ben Hogan. In the movie, Hogan, who had a near-fatal auto accident in 1949, makes his celebrated comeback at the 1950 Los Angeles Open. And you can watch the entire movie for free on YouTube at the link I've provided in the written version of this Substack article. Sam Snead, the actor. In the movie, Sam Snead plays himself at the Los Angeles Open. And the movie was filmed on location at the Riviera Country Club. You first see Snead in the locker room at the 118.15 timestamp on the movie. Then he sinks the birdie putt at 18 to tie Hogan and force a playoff at the 127.40 mark. This is the final birdie putt that Snead was referring to in his gamesmanship with Stockton last week in 1974. At 128.10, Snead sinks a putt in the playoff to win the 1950 Los Angeles Open. Snead then shakes hands with actor Glenn Ford playing the part of Ben Hogan. Now back to 1974. Stockton startled but unfazed. To his credit, Dave Stockton was unfazed by Snead's gamesmanship on the 72nd tee of the 1974 Los Angeles Open. Stockton birdied the hole and won the tournament by two shots. He talked to an AP reporter after the tournament about Snead's comment that he had made two birdies to beat Ben Hogan in 1950. It kind of startled me. I didn't know what to say. 
Gee, that's great, Sam. I'm proud of you. Instead of being rattled, Stockton hit a shot into the 18th green that he called one of the best shots of his life. And that sewed up his seventh PGA Tour victory with an eight under par 276. Sneed finished in second place, two shots behind with a 278. That was just three shots off the course record by Ben Hogan in the 1948 U.S. Open. In that tournament, 26 years earlier, Sneed finished fifth at 283. Hogan's 275 for 72 holes was so magnificent that the nickname for the Riviera Country Club has been Hogan's Alley ever since. And here, 26 years after Sneed had finished fifth to, Ho- to Hogan in that U.S. Open, Sneed was only three shots off Hogan's 72 hole record score. Sneed also beat his two winning scores in the Los Angeles Open. He won in 1945 with a 283 and in the celebrated 1950 playoff over Hogan in 280. Sneed's even par 71 in the final round made him one of just four players to shoot par or better in the final round. Jack Nicholas, who had won two weeks earlier in the Hawaiian Open, shot a final round of 75. Sam Sneed's stunning six rounds. Even more stunning is the role that Sam Sneed is now on over his first 108 holes of the 1974 PGA Tour season. Through yesterday at the Inverary Classic, Sam Sneed, the oldest player on tour, now has the lowest six round score of anyone on the entire PGA Tour. Here's how Sneed's six rounds rank him on the tour. Sam Snead, 318 minus 10. John Mahaffey, 320 minus 8. Tom Watson, 322 minus 6. Tom Kite, 323 minus 5. Gene Littler, 327 minus 1. Lee Trevino, 327 minus 1. Brian Allen, 327 minus 1. Johnny Miller, 328 even. Lanny Watkins, 330 plus 2. Hale Irwin, 330 plus 2. And Jack Nicholas, 332 plus 4. I found this little stat truly astonishing. Sam Snead, at 61, has literally dominated the PGA Tour for the past week. Sam Snead, the athlete. One reason Snead is able to play competitively at age 61 is that he can do things with his body that most other golfers cannot do at any age. Lee Trevino told the AP this week that Sam Snead is the most amazing athlete the world has ever seen. 34-year-old Jack Nicholas told Edwin Pope in the Miami Herald, I hope I'm in the shape Sam is when I'm 35. You know, that guy can kick the top of a seven-foot doorway? Satchel Sneed. That's what they ought to call him. Nicholas was referring to the seemingly, seemingly ageless baseball player, Satchel Page. How does Sneed keep going so well at his age? He gave his own explanation to Edwin Pope in the Miami Herald yesterday. The whole thing is I play every day. If I ever took a few months off, my game would shrivel up like a peach seed. A born entertainer too. Sam Snead is also a source of nonstop entertainment, both in the things he says and what is said about him. Snead doesn't shy away from the characterization of him as a hillbilly from West Virginia. Soon to be 62-year-old Snead told Edwin Pope in the Miami Herald yesterday, I'm really 47. Where I grew up in West Virginia, they don't count the years you go barefoot. Sam also spoke with Bernie Lincecum, the sports editor of the Fort Lauderdale News, and Lincecum reported the following story. Legend is Sneed put all his money, more than a half million dollars, in tin cans in the ground. That's not true, said Sneed. Jimmy DeMarit started that story. You know, honest to God, I came home one time and found a man with a pick and shovel digging up my backyard. Edwin Pope relayed another story from the first round of the tournament in yesterday's paper. As Sneed putted out on the final hole, a fan yelled out, Go get him, Sam. I'm 61 years old. Same age as you, but I got a cane. Another fan shouted, Attaboy, Sam. We're the same age. Pope then wrote, At lunch, Sneed is talking about the second voice. I look over, he says a trifle gruffly, and that son of a gun must be 90 years old. My personal connection to Sam Sneed. 
I have a soft spot for any story about Sam Snead because of a little personal connection I have with him. In 1986, I was privileged to play in the Duke Children's Classic in Durham, North Carolina. It's a celebrity pro-am type event. One of the mornings of the tournament, I went to the golf course early to practice. I was taking the event very seriously. My wife, Heather, left the hotel to go to the course sometime after me. The tournament had limos taking everyone to the course. And when Heather went out in front of the hotel, there was an empty limo waiting. The concierge told her, called Heather she would have to wait in the limo a few minutes until it fills up. Soon a group of five old men came out in front of the hotel, and the concierge told Heather that she would need to come out of the limo as these men were going to need this limo. Heather complied and got out, but thought the request was a little odd. As soon as she got out, she saw that the group of men included Sam Sneed. Sneed took one lick at Heather and said, Honey, you can get back in the limo. Sneed and his buddies were more than happy to ride to the golf course with my wife. On the ride, Sneed's entourage cracked jokes the entire time. They also told Heather how they had flown in together from West Virginia in a private helicopter. Heather told the group that her husband was playing in the tournament and had gone over early to practice on the driving range. When they got to the course, my wife left Sneed's group and came over to talk to me at the driving range. Soon I went back to hitting balls. This was the first time I would be playing in front of a crowd of spectators, and I wanted to play well. There were already at least a 100 spectators watching the golfers warming up. When I hit a couple of wayward shots, I got angry at myself, and in a lapse of judgment, I slammed my club down on the ground. I kneeled down to grab the club that was on the ground when I heard an old man's voice in a southern drawl say sternly, Son, pick up that club. I looked up. From my crouched position gazing skyward, the man seemed to be a giant. And as I made out his face, I was in shock. It was a giant. It was Sam Sneed. Sneed apparently had seen my wife on the range and came over to where I was heading. I immediately thought I was going to be subjected to a well-deserved admonishment by slamming Sammy Sneed for slamming my club in front of all the spectators. Instead, Sam Sneed followed up his first sentence with this, I'm going to teach you a lesson. He proceeded to grab hold of my arms and position them where he wanted them to be at the top of my backswing. He did this with a large crowd now focused on watching Sam physically altering my club position as I held my arms up high in a stationary backswing. Then Sam Sneed said to me, swing down. This is going to be a good shot. I was petrified. Everyone had just heard Sam Sneed proclaim that this was going to be a good shot. I said to Sam softly, how do you know it's going to be a good shot? I think he got a tiny bit annoyed at that and told me again to just swing down. From a stopped point at the top of my backswing, I felt kind of like how a baseball player stands at the plate with their bat back. It was normal for baseball, but alien for a golfer. I swung down as ordered by one of the game's greatest legends. Just as Sam's needed promised, I hit the ball high, long, and straight. It was the most beautiful shot I had ever seen myself hit in my life. The ball went 50% higher than any ball I'd ever hit. I'd been to many PGA Tour events and studied the players on the driving range, This shot I hit looked like a pro shot to me. Sam then took the open spot on the range to the right of me and began his warm-up. My next couple of shots looked similar to the first one, but ever so slightly off, not quite as high, straight, or long. Then I sliced one. Sam had his back to me as he was addressing his range ball. He could only have seen my swing if he had eyes on the back of his head, but he yelled to me, You're laying off the club. I was amazed. He could diagnose my swing fall just by seeing the trajectory of my shot out of the corner of his eye. Unfortunately, I didn't quite know what he meant by laying off the club, and I wasn't about to interrupt Sam Sneed's warm-up. I kept hitting, and most of my shots still looked pretty darn good, although none were quite the same as that first one. Overall, however, it was the best bucket of balls I ever hit. As I left the range, a spectator came over to me and said, 
you know, you just got a $500 lesson. Later that day, after play was completed, Sneed gave an exhibition. He explained that he thinks in terms of a dance rhythm as he swings. One, two on the backswing, three, four on the downswing. And he demonstrated his legendary flexibility. At age 74, he was able to do a straight laid touching your toes stretch. But he didn't just touch his toes. He kept going. He was able to put his palms flat on the ground without bending his knees. Incredible. The lesson I got from Sam Sneed wore off after a few weeks. I couldn't retain the muscle memory, but I still managed to hit my second hole-in-one a few weeks later on a shot that looked almost as good as the first one on the range when Sam Sneed positioned my arms perfectly. I don't know if I ever properly thanked my wife Heather for her part in enabling that lesson from Sam Sneed, so I'm going to thank her now, 38 years later, for that and all the other greatest moments in my life. Thanks, Heather. I love you. And in the Substack article, you can now see a picture of Sam Sneed and me taken on that day in 1986. Postscript. Sam Sneed is the oldest player ever to win a PGA Tour event. He was 53 when he won the Greater Greensboro Open in 1965. When Tiger Woods won the Masters in 2019, he tied Sam Sneed for the most PGA Tournament victories all time at 82. Sneed and Woods remain tied to this day for most PGA Tour victories. Thanks for reading, and please share your comments and tell your friends about the Sports Time Traveler. Bye-bye now.